Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. I've been having a short break this week after pumping videos out like the last cow on milking day. It was nice to take a while to get my breath back. But now I am back and it's time to wrap up some unfinished business and take a look at my W Series predictions and see if we got anything right. But in doing so I think I may have found a problem at the heart of the W Series. A sickness that puts the series in grave danger and something we'll be coming back to later. And also looking at my British Touring Car predictions because I didn't do a full prediction video for the BTCC so I thought I might as well stick it here. So remember to subscribe and let's begin! Sport. Number 18, Bruno Tomaselli. I was wrong about Tomaselli in a few ways. She did actually manage to score points and she didn't finish last, but she did only have one really good race, a fifth in Austria. I may have been wrong, but she still wasn't very good. Number 17, Nerea Marti. I was definitely wrong about Nerea because I thought she would struggle and fall well behind her Spanish compatriots. She finished 4th in the championship and left the other Spanish women in the dust and scored points at every race. Number 16, Irina Sidokova. The Russian definitely surprised me. Basing this mostly off her appearances in the Asian Formula 3 championship was probably a mistake because she had actually done a lot more racing in the last year than most of these women. She managed 9th in the standings despite missing 3 races and even grabbed a 2nd place in Austria. So far, this list is going really, really badly. Number 15, Ayla Agrin. The first woman on this list who actually did worse than I thought. Agrin had sounded out the idea of quitting motorsport after not being picked for season one, and I'm sure those thoughts have come to the surface again, because this was not a good season for the Norwegian. Hopefully she carries on, but there is no guarantee that she's going to be around for W Series 3. Number 14, Saber Cook. The only driver of 20 not to score any points. I said Saber Cook would struggle more than in her first year, and she duly did. She was bad. Number 13, Sarah Moore. Another I vastly underrated, started the season well but struggled as it progressed. She still finished in the points most of the time and really excelled, way more than I thought she would. Fifth is definitely a good result and we should see her in this series in 2022. Number 12, Abby Eaton. Well, she scored a few points but Abby Eaton still finished last of the six British entries. She finished 13th, so only one place worse than I said, and probably the closest I will get to getting one right on this list. Number 11, Gaziah Redest, Caitlin Wood and Abby Pulling. I know in the prediction video I just said Gaziah Redest, but I thought she would be at most races due to other women having more on their plate than in 2019. But she actually only raced in three, so I'll throw in all the reserve drivers. Of the three, Abby Pulling is the most notable. In only four races, she managed to finish 7th overall, which means she was better than the majority of the field. Redest and Wood were merely average. Number 10, Jessica Hawkins. Again, only one place out on this British driver, and she could have scored more points if she didn't crash into quite as many people. She had a decent mid-season, so if she could stop hitting people, she might have fit into the top 8 quite nicely, and was way better than her final positioning suggests. Number 9, Miki Kiyama. The Japanese driver was another big letdown, finishing 14th overall and seemed to really struggle at times. I doubt we will see her back again, but maybe she could thrive in Japan. Number 8, Vicky Pariah. What the hell went wrong here? Vicky Pariah was at least half decent in the first season of W Series. I'd understand taking a backward step, but this is full on falling down the stairs and into the basement. One single point. One point to save her from finishing last. She finished behind every part-time driver in the championship. Very poor from the Italian. Number 7, Marta Garcia. The Spaniard impressed me in the first season of W Series, taking a win at the Norris Ring, so I expected more of that. She hasn't even been close. She got a podium at Spa, and she's lucky she did, because she only finished in the points twice all year. Like many on this list, I was expecting a lot more from someone who did fairly well in year 1. Number 6, Belen Garcia. And this Spaniard was going to be my surprise of the year. She is a winner in the Spanish Formula 4 Championship, and I thought she could bring that spark here, well, she started off well with a 4th place in race 1, but she's been mediocre for the rest of the year and finished 10th in the standings. 
I stand by what I said though, and I think another year we'll see her improve even more. Maybe she can actually finish sixth. Number five, Alice Powell. I did not expect her to challenge for the championship, but Alice Powell has been the second best driver in the series all year and is now second in terms of all time wins. It was a good year and I definitely underestimated her. She could be champion in series three because she is good enough. She just has to get past Jamie Chadwick first. Number four, Fabian Wolverand. I don't know what happened to Fabian Wolverand in 2021. She took a couple of podiums and seemed to be driving like a pro at times and like someone who had severe head damage the rest of the time. She could have been a contender but ended up finishing sixth for the second year in a row and will probably be sixth again in 2022. Number three, Jamie Chadwick. And the biggest mistake, doubting that Chadwick could win a second championship. I thought she might be distracted by her other projects in 2021 and doubted if the W Series was her top priority. Well, she skipped rounds of Extreme E to race in the W Series and has won a second championship and may possibly be closer to a Formula 1 drive one day. Maybe. Number two, Bites Gavissa. This was a bad season for the experienced Dutch racer. I said second and she actually just grabbed eighth at the final race. She was at no point a challenger in the title race, didn't finish higher than fifth all year and only finished in the points at half the races. Vissa was a top challenger in 2019, but 2021 is best forgotten forever. Number one, Emma Kimmelainen. I think I might have been blinded by the fact I really like Emma Kimmelainen, and she maybe shouldn't have been favorite rather than someone I hoped did well. She had a good year, took another win, five podiums on the way to third, and she wasn't that far behind Alice Powell in second, but like everyone on this list, I got it wrong. So that was pretty disastrous, 0 out of 18. Start as you mean to go on, I suppose. The racing of the W Series was very entertaining and Jamie Chadwick once again proves she should be racing in Formula 2. I almost hope she, we don't see her in the W Series in 2022. She has outgrown this series very quickly. She is in with a chance of a Formula 1 drive at some point in the future and this is where we get to the problem I talked about in the introduction. You see the top 8 drivers automatically get invited back for 2022 and most of the top eight are quite old. Only four are under 25, and whilst Abby Pulling and Nerea Marti are under 20, Emma Kimmelainen is over 30. Now, I said a long time ago in about the third or fourth video on this channel that this series will be classed as a failure if no one ends up in Formula 1 eventually. Now, it's not completely out of the question, especially when it comes to Jamie Chadwick, but a lot of these women have no chance of getting into Formula 1. Now, ending up in a top drive in the WEC, or some other GT Championship, or maybe touring cars, is not a bad thing, but I think a focus on younger women about the level of Formula 3 would be in the series' favour, or Jamie Chadwick will be winning a third championship in 2022. Now onto the BTCC predictions. Here is what I said, and if you look at them, you can see I'm a genius. Got the top three in order, and Tom Ingram was there too, so that's four of the top five. Jake Hill did well, but I don't know why I thought Jason Plato would be up there. I think Father Time has caught up with him and we will never see race win 100. BMW won the manufacturers, although no prize for guessing that. I got laser tools and BTC in the teams list, although again I put a lot of weight on Plato to score decent points. I got three of the Indies title and Paramax screwed me there too. And Daniel Robottom won the Jack Sears trophy, so in total I got 6 out of 15 exactly right with another five on the list, but not in the right order. If you take the Paramax drivers out, I'm pretty much there, frankly. So apparently I know the British Touring Car Championship like the back of my hand. Also, I predicted that Andy Neat would be terrible, and guess what? So that is a roundup of predictions I made about W Series and the British Touring Cars. Failed completely on the W Series, and didn't do half bad on the BTCC. I'll do it again next year, I'm sure. In fact, I predict it. No motorsport roundup this week because frankly there wasn't a lot going on. Super Formula came to an end, but Tomoki Najiri was already champion anyway. Kobayashi, Lopez and Conway won in Bahrain in the WEC and have almost secured the title. They just need to finish second in a race with two competitive cars. If they fail, they should be shot. V8 Supercars returned and Van Gisbergen has a massive lead now. I'll probably do a roundup next week because there is a bit more going on. We have the final round of WEC, more V8 supercars, the penultimate round of the World Touring Cars, Super GT and Formula 1. So make sure you subscribe for more content, leave a like and tell a friend, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a good one.